everybody. We're coming on the air with breaking news. This is the New York Stock Exchange. The trading day is just beginning on Wall Street, and there are fears that the Dow will drop and drop quickly, and we're already seeing that. All right, so uh, opening bell just happened, but it does look like that the circuit breaker was tripped and trading has halted since uh, we dropped 7%. If you've been paying attention to the stock market at all in the year 2020, you probably noticed that in March, it took a huge nosedive. And that actually coincided with me getting into trading stock options around that time. But I was able to take a brokerage account that I deposited $1,500 into, and within less than a month, I turned that into $62,000. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the exact trades I made in order to make that happen. Oh, and before I begin, I am not a financial professional and anything in this video is just for entertainment purposes only. Okay, so the way I turned $1,500 into 62,000 was by trading stock options. Now, if you aren't familiar with stock options, here is me in a bubble bath to explain. A stock option is a contract that gives you the option to either buy or sell 100 shares of stock at a predetermined price by a set date. In the most basic sense, if you think a particular stock or ETF is going up in value, you'd want to buy a call option. If you think it's going to go down in value, you'd buy a put option. Now f off. It's worth noting that stock options aren't some golden ticket. I am Willy Wonka! They can be fairly risky to trade, and so if you don't have that risk tolerance to trade stock options, that's totally fine. It's even more risky when you're not hedging your options or implementing strategies such as spreads. The way I did it was fairly risky and I only did it with money that I was okay with losing if things went south. Of course, the higher the risk, the higher the reward. So let's get into it. I first opened my Robinhood account in July of 2019 with a $1,500 deposit. I didn't do much at first. I bought a few shares, I made a few more deposits, and then by February of 2020, thanks mostly to Tesla, my account was valued just under $5,000. That's when I decided to start trading options. So back then it was a bull market and my first options play was a call on Microsoft for $185 expiring on February 14th. I bought five contracts for a total of $505. I held them for just two days and then I sold them off for a total of $1,098 for a profit of $593. Now my next options play was T-Mobile. I was bullish on them as a company and I knew that they were trying to acquire Sprint and that was uh, coming up. So I decided to get some call option contracts. So on the sixth, I bought five contracts for a total of $550. And then I decided to buy 20 more on February the 7th for an additional $2,800. Now, as luck would have it, just a few days later, a judge approved one of the stepping stones in the merger, which brought them that much closer to acquiring Sprint, and their stock price shot up. And as a result, so did my option contracts. I sold most of the options on the 11th for a total of $13,750. In the next few days, I sold the rest for an additional $2,265, realizing a total profit of $12,665. Needless to say, after that, I was pretty hooked. So while Robinhood is fine for buying and holding stocks, if you wanna be a more active trader, it definitely leaves a lot to be desired when it comes to reliability, charting, filling orders, etc. You may recall Robinhood made headlines when they had an outage for an entire day, leaving people locked out of their account and unable to exit positions. Not a good look. Anyways, knowing that Robinhood had its drawbacks, I decided to make a TD Ameritrade account because their Thinkorswim platform is widely used by traders all over the US. On February 20th, I deposited $1,500 into this account, and this is the account that I took to $62,000 just less than a month later. My first trade was buying two contracts of the ETF QQQ. Now this fund is weighted towards NASDAQ tech stocks. It's tech stocks! and it's fairly volatile. So I ended up buying some puts on QQQ and I was betting that the price would be lower than $216 by March 6th. So I paid $424 for each contract for a total of $848. Luckily for me, the market took a little tumble and I sold each contract for $1,670 a piece, resulting in a total profit of $2,492. 
My next big trade was as follows. On March 2nd, I bought 20 contracts of Las Vegas Sands puts. I figured that Vegas was gonna get shut down soon due to the pandemic and that the casinos would take a hit. Well, I was right and the stock did tumble. And by the 16th, the share price had gone from $58 to $40. So my options were now worth $800 each. I decided to sell 14 of my 20 contracts for $11,200, netting a $9,000 profit. And I still own six contracts in case that stock continued to fall. I ended up selling the final six on April 3rd for $810 a piece. This total trade netted me $13,800 in profit. Not a bad deal. Okay, then on March 4th, I bought two contracts of SPY puts for $547 each. And in case you aren't familiar, SPY is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. So it's not just a single stock like Apple. Just five days later, these same contracts were worth $23.90. So I sold them for a profit of $3,686. Okay, so then on March 10th, I decided to place buy again. I purchased five contracts of puts for $805 a piece. Six days later, I sold four of the five contracts for $28.55 a piece, netting a profit of $7,395 leaving me with one contract again in case the market continued to fall. I ended up selling that last contract for $3,956 for a grand total of $11,351 in profit on March 18th. Now, if I would have held all five of my contracts till the 18th and then sold, I would have made an extra $4,000 in profit, but you never wanna let those green trades turn red. So it's better to lock in the profit. You can leave an extra contract as a runner. Excellent to see what happens and maybe you'll make more money on that one contract. But as I say, pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. So lock in the profit as soon as you can. I played spy puts a few more times. I bought three contracts for $661 on March 10th again and sold those eight days later for $3,290 per contract for a total of $7,887 in profit. At this point in time, all of my puts were really paying off, but I did decide to play some spy calls on March 17th. I bought five contracts of calls for $620 each, and I sold them all that same day, right before the market closed for $845 each, which was a quick $1,100 profit. I think my first losing trade was on March 18th. I bought 10 contracts of CODX for $110 each. That trade went against me and I sold them the next day, $40 each, and I lost $700. So that's the bulk of the trades I made that first month with that account. I won't bore you with absolutely every single trade, but I will post a screenshot of all the trades if you wanna take a closer look. The link will be in the description. So as you can see, I took my $1,500 deposit and turned that into roughly $62,000 by March 18th. Pretty awesome, right? And as much as I'd like you to think that I'm some sort of options wonderkind. People keep calling me a wonderkind. I don't even know what that means. That is not where the story ends. On March 24th, the market started to regain some of its losses and I still held a lot of open spy put positions. So I was still betting the market would continue to fall. Now instead, the market recovered over the next few weeks and I did not exit those positions. So I ended up losing roughly $20,000 out of that 60 which was a pretty tough lesson for me to learn. I was a little over ambitious with my positioning and I probably should have held more of a cash position to protect some of those profits. So I'm glad I learned that lesson now and can apply that moving forward. So I really wanted to make this video to illustrate the power of options. And back when I made all of these gains, the market was really on easy mode. All my put positions were paying off handsomely and it seemed like every trade just went my way. Ever since then though, it's been pretty choppy and unpredictable. So I don't want you to see this video and then just put a lot of money into options without doing your own research and developing your own strategies. So take the time, learn about options as much as you can before you even put any money into it. If you do want to learn more about trading options and getting started with that, let me know in the comments below and I can try to make that video happen. Now, if you do end up making a significant amount trading options or stocks, remember to make occasional withdrawals to your bank account to one, save some aside for the capital gains that you have to pay and two, lock in those profits for sure because you don't wanna be tempted to yellow on some Tesla puts and blow up your entire account losing all those hard-earned profits. That's all for this video. Once again, if you wanna see all the trades I made, I will post a screenshot and put it in the description below. Hit that thumbs up button if you like this video, it'll really help me out. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.